it's so interesting to see the Tesla Tesla bot has to be paid for itself by replacing a worker somewhere at a task that is maybe repetitive that costs money. So I think it's so interesting that Tesla already has, because the Musk companies are like, Elon Musk really looks at profitability and looks at the costs as well. And he doesn't want to burn money because he's way, they are way out of the startup phase. They, they can't burn money anymore or live from investments or something like this. Like many startups that are in the field actually do. They, they are, yeah, research funds are poured into those companies and that's why they don't have to be profitable at, the, at this point. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, until whoever is writing the checks decides that. Yeah, to okay, stop that. Stop it. And I mean, that's sort of what Boston Dynamics went through because when yeah. Google bought them, there was a mismatch there as far as Google was expecting they would be able to spin off a product right away. And they were still like more in that R&D. And that's why eventually they kind of sold off to Hyundai. And again, an example that they've been very open about the fact that they've built the bot to prove that they could do it, but they never thought about the manufacturability of it. And now they're having to go back and redesign it to make sure they can do it. That's test, something Tesla did right away. And again, I don't think they have that many customers for Atlas. They have a lot for the other bots that they're working on. So, yeah. you know, they, they definitely have something something there, but you know, it still is not quite clear what the use case is for Atlas and what improvements you would have to add to, to Atlas. What, one of the things that's sort of missing is like real proper hands. So if it's going to be used in some factory situations, they will need some sort of either some sort of special end of arm tooling or be, basically hands to be able to manipulate. They get some yeah. very simple grippers, but they want to have something maybe with a little bit more dexterity. And a lot of the other humanoid robots that are out there, they are looking for niche markets and I think a few of them were sort of designed to be manufactured fairly easily, but I still think that they're, they may be pretty expensive. They may be a hundred thousand or more. Yeah. It's hard to tell the pricing because you've got to like go into contact info and say, yes, I'm interested in get I actually talk to a salesman. It's like not right on the website on how much it is. So I've always learned that if, if, if you have to ask, you can't afford. So that must mean it's a pretty high number there and it probably, all of them are going to be around there. The Tesla bot, when they start producing it, the cost will be pretty low. But we think the initial ones coming off the line, depending upon how the accountants want to work it out, might be pretty expensive. So number one, number two, of course, will, will be kind of high because you have all these other costs. But if you actually look at the cogs going in there, it's probably not going to be that much. And so when it becomes useful is when, however, you kind of look at the cost of that bot and then replacing some labor over a certain period of time, when is the return on investment? And I think that return investment can be pretty quick because like I mentioned, one of those operations is about $200,000. That's an easy operation, not a high skill, but you know, a yeah. low skilled one would be about something like that. And right now, one of those operations can be manned by one person. So there might be two operations that are kind of going on, but they're slow enough that one person can go ahead and do it. Optimus yeah. might not be quick enough right now. It can only do one of those within the 40 second cycle time that they have. Yeah. So you get a, a second optimist to go over and do the other because they're not really linked to one another. It's just the two operations that have to be done within that 40 seconds that we think one person can do because yeah. we want to get as much ut utilization out of that person. But if Optimus is not 80% utilized, or let's say it is 80% utilized, but it's just very slow compared to a human, it yeah. doesn't matter because we're not paying Optimus 25 bucks an hour. That's true. It's like it's yeah. just, it would be able to be useful and cost effective very early and then eventually it'll get fast enough that it can do both of those mm -hmm. and then maybe it's fast enough that now it can somehow do three whereas before you could not even think of doing that with a human operator and so now it becomes more efficient so it can be less efficient than a human all it has to be is more economical that's it yeah this makes sense yeah of course i mean yeah that that's true i think the analogy with yeah they don't pay tesla what 25 dollars hour it makes total sense yeah, i mean it, now, maybe it costs 100000 to produce, but if you're somehow saving $200,000, it's already... And then, yeah, we've got some other guys with blue collars or white collars running around, some hourly costs for Optimus, but it will probably be substantially less. Yeah. Yeah. And it, this makes sense. Elon always tries to, to put it in there that the, these things also in the development phase are actually cost effective or 
they don't cost as much uh, to the company. It makes sense. Right. So the first customer of Tesla bot is actually Tesla, of course, right. in that sense, right. Uh, right. with yeah. with um, saving money um, at first. And I th right. that's why I, I'm right up your alley with with that um, thesis that they won't sell this thing for the next couple of uh, tens of years. I don't maybe ten years or or seven years or six years. I, I don't see them. Um, renting them out maybe maybe just as a test phase or something like this mm -hmm. but not but not substantially like selling those you know, things i think yeah. their suppliers i mean you know the the first ones outside of tesla will be their sub suppliers yeah that would make that sense makes so they sense. would go in there mm -hmm. and they would get more data from the sub suppliers and they would be you know by leasing it they get all the data they need and then eventually yeah. they'll decide it's, it's ready to go now you know the, the problem with fsd is that it needs human supervision because mm -hmm. It has to be absolutely perfect before it can really be released. It's just, you know, otherwise mm -hmm. there's, there's too many issues. Mm -hmm. The Tesla bot does not have to be perfect because it's a very constrained environment. It's a very controlled environment. So if we need to put a cage around it, we can still put a cage around it and it'll be okay. And, you know, so long as it looks like it could run eight hours, just nonstop doing that thing and no one actually has to be there, that's fine. It's, mm -hmm. it's already useful at that point, even if it can't do a lot of other things. And even if there's some things that might be a little bit unsafe about it, but it's just not walking around. It's we were keeping it in a geofenced area and that's it. Um, yeah. So that's that's very different. And that that's why I think you can start seeing the Tesla bot being implemented earlier. And I go back to one of my favorite expressions is, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. So Tesla bot does not have to earn money. It only has to save money. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Oh, crazy. It's so crazy. It's so science fiction for me still to, to I mean, when I saw the two rockets of SpaceX land at the same time at 2015, that was the, the, the point where I thought, okay, this, I know it was interesting before that. I also found it very interesting what they did, but seeing that really turned uh, a thing inside of me, like, like it, it really turned my, my, my view on the future as well. And uh, now I think uh, Tesla as well is for me a point where, where you really see this is so fundamentally different. And also I, I count FSD into that as well because they are similar. They, 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 need the, the, they need to solve real life vision AI, which is absolutely astonishing. And, and this is also something that I think is so overlooked. It's not just a car company. People just view it yeah. as just oh tesla is the car company and you know most of this crazy guy who bought twitter and stuff like this and uh, it's so interesting to see that yeah how 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 in uh, how how fundamentally important this also is for the for the future it's such a technological advancement like we've never seen before actually i mean this is solving vision that means they solve the brain and the eyes in the in the 3d space and this is yeah, who 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 does who does something like this yeah, on and, this and scale who, at yeah. this scale and this pace actually? It's and, and who keeps taking these things on? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And landing rockets itself, you think would would be more than enough? And then when when you <laughs> yeah. build the bots, and, you know, I, I felt the same way. Is that when I heard that SpaceX was was thinking of landing? I mean, it was already amazing that a private company was putting satellites in space because I'd seen so many startups that were trying to do it and they never got that far. And yep. so I was getting to the point that you're really jaded and like, I hear this company, mm. SpaceX coming along, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there, I've seen that, you yeah, know, that's they, not going <laughs> to happen again. They're going to run out of money before they do anything that's always happened. And then I think they were doing the landing and then to see the grasshopper. And I could not believe it when I was watching how the grasshopper was going around. I look at this like, well, you know, I, I took, I have an aerospace degree and, you know, looked at how rockets were designed and everything else. And it was pretty much stated like, no, nah, you'd never be able to land these things. You know, they just have to be disposable. The economics is not there. It's just really too complicated and too difficult. And if you're going to do a recovery you know, with a parachute or, you know, just these other ways. And you did see some of these grand schemes of people thinking about doing it, but it was always one of those, ah, someday, someday, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, yeah. And then suddenly when I saw that, it's like, wow, someday came. Yeah, it actually came. They actually <laughs> yeah. landed a robot, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, the first stage, and now it's like two hundred and something that they've done. Yeah, yeah, it is just unbelievable that you can do something like that, and then to realize with the bot, it all comes down to the AI, and the AI is there. And something else I should point out that Elon just keeps on giving these breadcrumbs where you you kind of read it and do a double take. So he did a reply to 
a tweet. I don't know if the, well, yeah, it was called a tweet because it was before it could change over to X, so we can call it a tweet. I don't know what they're called now, but uh, <laughs> we, we gotta still about, keep calling those he, tweets. Yeah, he had a conversation with ChatGPT, and then uh, Elon said, um, "Try it with Tesla AI." And John Gibbs also, you know, he he replied to it, and I, you know, I had the same feeling. Tesla AI does that mean Tesla has a large language model? I thought that's what X AI was about. Did he type in the wrong thing, or is it like something else going on there? So I have a feeling that Tesla already has their own language model. They've already been able to do it because I think everyone and his mom can almost create a large language model. All you need is access to a big supercomputer. You just need that. Okay. Uh, how to do it? There's you know plenty of researchers out there that know how to make a large language model. You just need to get the data in there. You just need to be able to access. So Tesla has access to it. They've got some bright minds. So it makes sense to have it. Now, is it exactly the same as ChatGPT? I don't know, um, but it's probably good enough for what they need for Optimus because it makes sense. You're going to need an interface. You don't need it necessarily for FSD, though it would be interesting to just actually see that go into um, the Tesla at some point because there is mm -hmm. a voice mode in Tesla. In the, 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 it's okay, but it's slow. And it would be really nice to be able to just kind of have a conversation with it as you're driving along. So the, you might actually have it in the car, but I think it's really meant more for Optimus. But hey, you know, if we can put it in Optimus, we can also put it in the vehicles themselves. So it would mm -hmm. sort of make sense to have something like that there. And there's some possibilities that depending upon how they're approaching the breaking down tasks, that they're using a type of large language model by tokenizing the movements of the bot anyway. So it may be that they needed some kind of architecture like that. Can you explain it's, this further? Because I don't understand what you mean, actually. Okay, so for, the for dummies, large language <laughs> models work really well because you can you can quantize everything. You can discrete lang you can ah, discretize yeah. language into letters and words, and from that build yep. up the grammars and yep. figure everything yep. out. So that's what they mean by a token. And mm -hmm. um, then they did this thing we called the uh, I think it's the uh, grammar of lanes. They came up with it. They showed it the one of the AI, I think AI day two, where they're trying to mm -hmm. figure out lane selection and what's going on there because it was a really complicated problem. And they said, oh, this is very much like a large language model. And they, they went in and it's like, oh, okay, we're just going to tokenize all these different lanes and figure out what the grammar is and how you connect one lane to another. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. saw that's a way of handling a problem that was like a novel approach because we always think of it having to do with language, but you can come up with other kinds of things. And I'm speculating and could be completely wrong, but part of my speculation is that you may be able to start taking movements of your bot and thinking of tokenizing them in a way. So like hand gestures. So we have an infinite number of combinations that what our hands can go through. But if you just say there's certain combinations of our fingers that make sense and others that don't, mm -hmm. or ones that are very common. So you know we have a very big vocabulary in our languages but a very small amount that we use on a daily basis. So those are the ones that you would say are very important words to learn, to know what they are. And yep. it'll just be a question of the bot kind of being able to understand what are some of the key sort of gestures you would have with your hand for doing, accomplishing oh, yeah. certain tasks. So different grasping tasks. So when you say grab something, you know, that's very universal. It could mean anything. But if I say to grab a pen, then you have to hold it mm -hmm. a particular way. If I say ah, to okay. grab a mm -hmm. bottle, mm -hmm. it's going yeah. to be done something else. If I say yeah. grab a piece of paper, again, the grasping of that is very different in how you would pick it up. So yeah. you can yeah. imagine yeah. when you're talking to the bot that if you just say grab that, it's mm -hmm. going to have to figure out what that is. Or mm -hmm. if you say grab the piece of paper, it's immediately going to know, oh, I need to, you know, this is what I need to do with my hand versus something else versus something mm -hmm. else versus something else. And so eventually it will be able to build up kind of sentences, you know, the, the, let's say the analog of a sentence to figure out what grammatically makes sense for doing a particular task. 